Hi everyone, this is Jim. Uh, this video should be uploaded on um, New Year's Day, so Happy New Year's everybody and welcome to uh, 2018. I hope you all have a uh, great year coming up. So let's get right into the game. I had the white pieces and start off with d4. My opponent went to e6. Yeah, funny move to kind of uh, transpose into different things. If I play um, c4, uh, black could continue with uh, knight to uh, f6 and play a Nimzo Indian, or even uh, if uh, after c4 also uh, f f5 is an idea going for a Dutch defense. Uh, but the main move here is e4, in which case uh, black transposes into a uh, French defense. So we get a French defense uh, starting with the move d4. So I go knight c3, my usual move against the French, and then um, there's a couple, there's a lot of moves for black here, the two main ones are uh, the win hour variation with bishop to uh, b4 or the classical variation with knight to f6. But my opponent played the move uh, c6. So it was a pretty rare move and uh, I didn't really know what to do. Um, right here I played the move uh, a3. What I was thinking was, you know, I didn't like this pin. The knight here is needed to support that pawn and I wasn't sure I wanted to uh, just give up the uh, that uh, center pawn just yet. I thought I would try and hold on to the pawn for a little bit. Uh, when I looked at this in the opening book, the uh, the most popular move here was actually f3. Although I think uh, this is by transposition because actually uh, in this position there were fewer games and after f3 there were more games. So I think actually what happened is uh, this was a Karakhan fantasy variation by, by transposition. So the Karakhan would be those moves, uh, c6 and uh, d5, and uh, and white would have played the moves uh, e4 and d4, and then uh, after d5, f3, that's the fantasy variation of Karakhan. So it's like the fantasy variation, but a couple of more moves have been played, uh, e6 and knight to uh, c3, which are not, I don't think, the main moves of the fantasy variation, so maybe a, a sideline, but uh, anyway, uh, I don't really think f3 is the best move in this position. <laughs> I just think it's an interesting way to get to a different opening. Um, let's see. Uh, the chess engine recommends knight f3. And what it has to say about the pin is that I really should just give up uh, my e-pawn, trade it off. I'm not giving it up. Uh, and, you know, we both have an equal share of the center. Um, there's this pin, maybe it's not going to really amount to a whole, much, a whole bunch after I castle and uh, this pawn is not yet going to come under any fire. So it looks like this is fine for white as well. But the move I played, a3, was also in the uh, in the list of uh, top moves the chess engine gave. It was knight f3 was the best, but uh, this was in the top two or three, so it's still a fine way to play. Um, he went a6, which is kind of peculiar, but we're going to see more peculiar moves from black, so I'll hold off commenting on his setup uh, for a few more moves, and we'll see where he's going. Uh, let's see, I went knight f3, he went b5, another strange move. Uh, I took here. I kind of, after all these pawn moves, I kind of wanted to see how he was going to take back, if he was going to uh, take with the e pawn and then have this backward c pawn that I could play against, um, or if he was going to take with the c pawn and have this uh, open queen side. And this is the way he took. He took with the c pawn. Um, so I played the move bishop d3, and now he played the move knight f6. So on move seven, he's finally developed his first piece. <laughs> So he's definitely violating uh, all those uh, principles they teach you uh, when you're a beginner. But uh, oddly enough, there doesn't seem to be any uh, direct refutation of this play. I mean, the chess engine certainly rates white better in this position, and I would think white is better too. Um, there's, uh, you know, white has an equal share of the center and has more pieces developed. And um, I don't know if these, uh, this uh, queenside pawn attack is is uh, going to amount to a whole lot. Although it could be, uh, I suppose, dangerous in the long run. Um, so you, you would expect uh, black to be worse. But what's surprising is, is that uh, black is not that much worse. And in fact, this still seems to be playable, or at least there's no, no direct way to, uh, to get a uh, immediate material edge here. Um, so anyway, I just continue with normal development, which looks like it was the correct move. I go, I castle, he goes bishop e7. And now I had to, um, Kind of think of a plan. I didn't want to just mindlessly develop this bishop without some idea of where to put it. If I come out here right away, uh, you know, he can harass it with the knight. Uh, I could play a move like uh, h3 to stop the knight from coming there, but that's 
awfully slow. And if I'm going to do anything about uh, uh, Black's peculiar play here, I should really uh, look for a plan involving uh, my pieces. Um, so I, I thought about it for a while and eventually came up with a plan. Um, it involved pawns as well as pieces. I don't want to mislead you because I wanted to give you a, a chance to uh, see if you could discover the plan. I checked it out with the chess engine afterwards and it was actually uh, the top choice for uh, for white, the plan I played. Um, but it wasn't, uh, it's not like it's a tactical exercise. It's just, uh, you know, it's a, come up with a, a two or three move plan for white. How would you organize your pieces and pawns here? And um, yeah, pause the video now if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to talk about what I played here. So I started with the move knight e2. I'm getting the knight out of the way so that I can support the center with the, the move c3. Uh, and I won't have to be, my pieces won't be tied down. And uh, this knight is also headed over to the king side. I thought uh, after these two moves, um, black is definitely going to castle uh, king side because, uh, well, first of all, the queen side is kind of airy. And then secondly, um, he hasn't developed any pieces. So if he's going to castle at all, uh, it would be several moves before he would get to castle queen side. So I, I just had decided he's most likely to castle a king side and I should be uh, putting my pieces over in that direction. So knight e2 is the first step in the plan. He goes knight c6. Second step is c3. It uh, not only defends the center with a pawn, but it also kind of slows down these pawns from coming forward. So it's also uh, guarding against uh, his uh, ideas on the queen side slightly. He did castle at this point, and then I played knight g3. So that little three-move sequence was pretty much the end of my plan. Um, the knight could have gone to um, f four as well. I think that was that was on the list of moves the chess engine had, but this seems to be okay as well. So um, black went h6 here, and now I, I come up with a second plan, which is not as good. So, uh, but I but I um, you know looked at this with a chess engine. I asked the chess engine what kind of plan it would come up with in this case, and it came up with some interesting ideas here. So here's another chance for you if you want to uh, guess the right plan here. I'll tell you the, the wrong plan <laughs> as a hint. I played, you know, bishop c2 and queen d3, my typical uh, setup for a uh, mating attack. Um, but uh, that's not how the chess engine would play this. So if you want to uh, pause here and think about uh, what kind of plan you might play for white in this position. Okay, I'm going to uh, give the answer away now. So the chess engine would start with the move rook e1, which is a very logical starting move, just putting the rook on the half open file, giving it more scope. But there's a follow up here, which is after uh, queen c7, which is the recommended move for black, knight to e5. And now, uh, yeah, this is just a great knight here. So I think I like this plan. It's just putting the knight on a good outpost. And this is probably going to, at least the chess engine indicates that uh, Black should trade that off rather than trying to live with a knight on e5. And then, uh, well, this knight would get chased back. And uh, I would have to play a move or two to uh, defend this advanced pawn. But you see that I've, uh, I've gained uh, space over here on the king side and, and reduced uh, my opponent's space. So as well as this uh, bishop is still kept in jail. Um, so it seems to be a good way to uh, to keep black bottled up and allow me to organize my king side attack. So that was the uh, computer plan. Anyway, let's get on with the game. I played bishop c2. He went rook e8. I went queen d3 as projected. And now um, bishop d6. It seems like uh, even though I've been doing okay, um, this, this bishop d6 move would be enough to... Uh, kind of slow down my attack here and, and give black a playable position once again. So it, basically it's it's aimed against the 95 idea. So now we can just uh, trade it off. Um, so it seems like black is okay. But instead he played the move bishop f8. It's an interesting defensive move. Um, he's defending uh, these pawns. Obviously he's noticed that, you know, I've lined up my bishop and my queen and the other bishop all pointing over here at the king's side. Maybe there's uh, ideas of a sacrifice on uh, h6. So now if he takes back with a pawn, it'll be defended by the bishop. And uh, it's not so easy for me to uh, break through with an immediate sacrifice. But um, it's not the most active square for the bishop and uh, hasn't solved the problem of his light squared bishop. So actually right here, I have a pretty good uh, position. 
once again, the chess engine wants to proceed with knight e5. And now knight e5 is actually stronger because uh, it's hitting this knight, and the knight is not protected. And the other line, queen to c7, had been played. And um, so knight here is hitting the undefended knight. It's uh, Taking is does not look that great. So, um, in fact, uh, taking probably loses material because after I take, there's... Uh, if he's forced to move that knight, there's an immediate uh, mate threat. So he's got uh, big problems. He can't take there. So knight to e7. Defending maybe is not so great either. Um, and now there's a sacrifice. That's the uh, chess engine's suggestion here. Just taking on h6 and uh, playing knight to h5. <laughs> Going after this guy. And, uh, you know, there's a threat just to take that knight and mate on uh, h7 pretty hard to meet. In fact, he has to give material back to stop the attack. And uh, well, I can win the knight this way with f3. So I get a piece back. I've won the pawn over the king side, and uh, his pieces are still lacking in development, and I have a, a great attack going. So a winning position for white there. So by this point, uh, black has definitely messed up. And it was that bishop f8 move was, uh, I guess, the last straw. Uh, but well, fortunately for my opponent, uh, it didn't. He didn't die immediately because I, I had this idea of getting rid of this knight, and I was just going to use my bishop to do it. So this is still some edge for White, but uh, no, no longer that uh, immediate win. Uh, let's see. He goes knight e7 anyway. He's bringing the knight over to defend the king side. Okay, bishop e5, and he goes knight to uh, g4. Uh, an interesting defense here, and a better defense would be knight to uh, f5. But uh, at this point, I think there is actually, uh, even with this defense, there's, there's a, an attack that looks pretty winning here. Um, first of all, taking off this knight, bringing the queen out, and then doing a little dance with the other, with this knight. Knight to h5, kicking the queen. The queen wants to stay over here in touch with these pawns on the king side and preventing the, uh, the, this uh, mate along this diagonal. Knight here, queen goes back. Rick F to E1. And then um, G6 is the best move here, according to the chess engine. But this uh, runs into a little tactic. There's actually a way for white to uh, win a pawn here. <laughs> okay, uh, pause the video if you want to uh, spot the tactic. I'm going to give the answer away. It's uh, knight takes D5. <laughs> There's a pin. That Rick on the back rank is undefended, so he can't, he can't really take that knight. So that, that's if he plays g6, which is actually the recommended move. If he defends that uh, rook, say with bishop to uh, d7, that's defended twice now with the other rook and the bishop, so this uh, tactic no longer works. Um, you can hop in here with knight e5, hitting the bishop. Uh, say rook comes over to defend it. Now g4. And uh, this is going to win some material because of the uh, mate threat once again. So uh, I think there's a winning attack here. And uh, in most lines, let's see, he goes knight to g6, and uh, I went h4. So once again, uh, a interesting move, but uh, not the best. <laughs> and uh, he can still hold on after this a little bit. Uh, so the best move here would have been uh, knight to h4. Just trying to uh, get rid of, oh no, knight to h4, not, not knight to h5. Um, Let's go back. Knight to h4. Trying to get rid of this knight. And notice that if he takes, then I'll grab the other knight. And there's no stopping this uh, this mate threat. Well, uh, there is a there is a way to stop it, but his uh, queen is hanging. <laughs> so so we can't uh, stop it without losing uh, material. So after knight h4, he actually can't take that knight. It's kind of a neat little trick. Um, and... Um, so he could play something like rook e7 to try and hold on, but then um, then I can play knight takes g6. And um, let's see, after he takes back, um, you know, he's, he's losing he's losing this pawn. I still have the threat of taking here and mating, and uh, this looks like a win. So anyway, that would have been uh, knight h4. That would have been a nice, nice way to continue the game. <laughs> but, uh, well, I played h4 h4 with the idea of harassing uh, his knight here and chasing it off that diagonal. Um, and here he could have played uh, something like bishop e7 
And if I go, oh, that, that was d7, bishop e7. This is the chess engine's line. And if I go h5, which was what I was intending, you can play knight to f8. And uh, now I can trade off this knight, finally, but I still can't mate because of this knight. It's like uh, Bent Larson said, there's no, <laughs> with the knight on, there is no mate with the knight on f8. So uh, there's another interesting uh, defensive idea to think about if you're in a tough situation. Um, so that, that might have worked here. Uh, white is winning, but uh, it's a longer, a longer slug. Uh, anyway, after I played h4, he played h5 to stop my pawn from coming forward. And finally, I spot one of these uh, winning ideas. In fact, there's a, a simple win of a pawn here if you want to think about it for a second. And it's a good way to, to start this uh, sequence of moves. So pause the video if you want to take a moment to spot the tactic. Anyway, I'm going to give the answer away now. So it's a pretty simple idea. I just take the knight off. He took back, and then the h5 pawn is uh, missing. So um, I went a pawn here, and um, I'm still attacking. His queen drops back to e7. Um, I drop my knight back to g3. You might think it's going in the wrong direction, but I want to uh, have the ability to push this pawn forward. So I think it's a reasonable way to play. And so now he takes the precaution of... Uh, f5, stop shutting down my uh, attack along the diagonal. So I've gained some material here, but my attack is uh, slowed down a bit. I continue on with uh, h5. He uh, plays knight to f4, bringing the knight forward. Let's see, I guess he didn't really, where else could it go? It could have gone back to the corner. He wasn't looking forward to the knight going back to the corner, so he tried to put it on an active post. I played uh, queen to e3. And then he went queen d6, defending the knight. Actually, there's a better defense here with uh, g5. And let's see, I could take on passant. And then he can play bishop h6. So it gives up another pawn, but he has this uh, interesting defense of the knight. Now, this, this bishop is loose here, so I don't really have to worry about uh, discovered attacks on my queen as long as the knight can't move with check, but in fact it can in this position, so I need to play something like king h2. And now now the knight is pinned against the bishop. It can't move with check, uh, and I can slowly uh, put more pressure on the knight. Maybe I'll get in the move knight to, uh, knight to uh, h5 there to round it up. So that looks like a win as well. Anyway, he went uh, queen d6, and I played the move knight e5, so it's a nice uh, interruption tactic. And... Um, now his knight is loose and it doesn't really have any square to run to. He could once again uh, try this g6 move, but uh, well, it doesn't work in this case either. It still still runs into trouble. So anyway, he took on h5 and I played, um, oh, I took back and then uh, he played bishop to e7. So trying to bring a bishop into the game. Um, so I'm a piece up here, and I'm continuing the attack. I play queen g3, and um, with the queen and the knight uh, concentrated on the uh, g7 pawn, <laughs> he probably intended to play uh, bishop to uh, f6 when he played this maneuver, bishop to e7. But at this point, he realized that bishop to f6 is just going to be met by knight takes bishop because of the pin on the uh, g file. So he found nothing better than bishop to f8. So here's your last uh, tactical quiz. Can you find the winning move in this position? Okay, this is a nice one. So uh, if you haven't found it yet, uh, pause the video and look for it. I think you can find it. I am giving the answer away now. Uh, this is move 25, so you know that this, this uh, last move has to be a critical one uh, because it, the game can't last any longer. And I played knight to f6 check, and he resigned. So this is cool because, in fact, uh, it's a maiden 2 from this position. If he had played it out, if he had played it out, it wouldn't have been a miniature because it would have been 26 moves long. But uh, if you notice, this uh, square is covered by the knight, so the king can't run there. This square is covered by the other knight, so the king can't run there. Uh, nobody can take the knight, so there's only one legal move here, and that's king to h8. And then the other knight comes in, and that's the checkmate. So, uh, like I said, that would have been a 
26 move game. It would have not quite been a miniature, but he resigned on move 25. So anyway, the two knights taking away all the squares of the king in the corner. Kind of a nice little uh, scenario there. Um, so anyway, that was a fun game, a, a good game to start off your uh, new year with. And, uh, well, keep remembering to uh, look for those tactics. And uh, I will see you guys later.